Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to be describing how uh, solid rear axle systems work. Uh, they're basically uh, pretty easy. It's, uh, as stated, it's a solid rear axle that goes across to uh, both wheels. And they're uh, pretty common on uh, the rear axles on uh, trucks. And uh, basically, like I said, uh, you have a, a solid rear axle that goes across to both wheels. And in the middle here you have the differential. That's what takes input from the drive shaft and then sends it at a 90 degree angle to the axles to the wheels. And uh, here you have your coil springs and your shock absorbers. So unlike the McPherson strut system, usually your uh, shock absorbers uh, will be surrounded by your coil springs around it, whereas on these systems they'll be separate. And uh, you also have the uh, a leaf spring system. Your leaf springs act as your coil springs, but they're just out a different way. Basically, they're bent downward like this. And when you go over a bump, it'll get straight again. And then when it goes back down, it goes to bent and just keeps moving up and down like that. And again, you have your shock absorbers that take that uh, shock energy. So your springs are doing the suspension, keeping it suspended. When you go over a bump, that shock absorber takes that energy and gives you a smoother ride. If you didn't have shock absorbers, you'd feel every single little bump in your car. And there's some other systems too, but those are the most common types on them. Uh, basically, you got your uh, pros of them is uh, they're very strong. That's why trucks use them, especially uh, very big, big trucks that use them. And uh, they're very dependable. Uh, it's not that often necessarily you have to replace much of this stuff, unlike maybe McPherson strut systems, you have to replace that whole spring shock coil assembly. You may have to replace your shock because it's uh, leaking, but that's not too bad, uh, just replacing that itself. So they're very uh, dependable and strong. They're also good for uh, drag racing because uh, on a drag race you don't have to worry about handling, you just have to worry about going in a straight line. And your road is very flat and smooth. You don't have potholes or you don't have any cornering. So with that being, you want your tires to be nice and flat on the road. You don't want any type of uh, uh, camber change. Because any type of camber change, you lift a little bit of the wheel off the ground, you lose uh, traction. Even if it's just for a millisecond. And when you're drag racing, every single second counts. So... Uh, that's why on race cars you that do do cornering you have that negative camber to allow it to go flat when you're going around the corner whereas uh, drag racing you don't go around corners you just go in a straight line so you want that solid axle to give you all that traction on the tire that's why uh, a lot of the old American muscle cars that uh, from the 60s and early 70s that's why a lot of them were uh, solid rear axles and even drag racing cars nowadays, like the uh, Copo Camaro, that's just for drag racing, uh, solid rear axles. And basically, they're uh, cheaper. They're just simply, uh, uh, like I said, a rear axle and some leaf springs and a coil. You don't have necessarily all that added parts like a double wishbone suspension system does. Uh, cons are uh, the handling. So basically the opposite of that. So when it does come to cornering, uh, you don't want uh, solid rear axles. And uh, also because uh, both tires are being affected. Uh, if you're going maybe over a rough road and a bump on one tire while cornering, it may affect the performance of it, of the other tire, and it'll just ruin your uh, handling. Uh, same uh, with uh, not as smooth as a ride either. So if you want a nice luxury car or even a passenger car, you want that smooth ride. And again, both tires are affected, so if you hit a pothole on the right side, it's going to go through to the other and give you more of a bumpy uh, feeling to it. That's why a lot of big pickup trucks, uh, you can feel a lot of bumps that you go over because it's sending that shock energy throughout the whole rear of the vehicle. And uh, basically, they're, uh, they, they can be heavy. Sometimes they can be lighter, but most of the time they're heavier. That's why big trucks use them. So if you have a race car, you want to reduce as much weight as possible, whereas basically a pickup truck, uh, weight necessarily isn't that much of a problem when as much as pickup trucks weigh. And uh, that's pretty much it, a basic description of them. Uh, thanks for watching and please subscribe.